In this short video, we're going to run through some of the options that are available when using the Create Shape function. The Create Shape function works specifically with the working model, and it lets me take any closed vector and assign a 3D profile to be applied uniformly throughout that shape. So if we select these three different shape vectors we've got on the screen here, come down to the modeling tools, you can see the icon here for Create Shape from Vectors. You can see within the menu I have three standard shapes, round, angular and planar, which is just a raised flat shape. I control each of these by defining the angle, which I can type in, or I can use the slider bar here. As I make changes within the menu, you can see that they will be applied in the 3D view and a shape will actually be calculated. So you can see there, with an angle roughly 48, 50 degrees, what we're going to get throughout those three different shapes. Some other options I've got for defining the shapes are the ability to add a base height and also to define how the height is limited within here. And we'll come to those in a second. First of all, let's just type in a specific angle of 60 degrees. If I hit space, it will automatically reapply the shape. Now you can see there was no need for me to undo this or to go back or erase what I'd already done. As long as I don't deselect the vectors I currently have selected or exit this particular function, then I can keep editing the shape that I'm working on right now. As soon as I selected a different set of vectors, this shape would be basically put into the working model and I would now be generating new shapes to add to that. So this means that while I've still got these selected, I can change it maybe to an angular profile and that will automatically update on the screen so I can see the result of that. Or we could change to a planar profile. In this case, I've got my base height set to zero, so I'd actually need to put in some kind of a value, hit the space bar to accept it, and there I can see what that's going to give me on the screen there. Now, some of the other options we've got within here. At the moment, we have this base height of half an inch set, so it's just raising up vertically by half an inch. If I wanted to combine that with one of the actual three-dimensional shapes, I could come back, I could choose the profile, and now what I'm getting is a 60 degree angled dome on top of a half inch platform defined by the base height. If we set the base height back to zero, hit the space bar to accept, we'll explore some of the other options that we've got within here. If we come down to the final height options, you can see I can choose between no limit, limit to height, and scale to exact height. The first option we have selected is no limit. That means that whatever the width of the vector is, is going to define how high it's going to get based on the angle and the shape we've chosen. So the wider it is, the more depth it will be able to achieve. And so you can see the dome is the widest shape we have here, so it gets up to the highest level. The rectangle is slightly thinner, so that doesn't get as high and the areas on the T are much thinner so they don't get nearly as high but even on there you can see that the wider parts of that will get to a higher depth. In some cases we may want to determine what that height is. For instance we might want to come into here and say that we want to limit the height of these shapes. At the moment I have a height of 0.25 inches set which means as soon as the shape hits a quarter of an inch it's just going to be flattened off. So we can see that has quite an effect on the dome because it was quite high on the rectangle it has a small effect and there's probably nowhere on the T that's actually getting up to a depth of a quarter of an inch so in this case that will have no effect on our T. If we change that to a lower level, hit the space bar to accept, we can see that it now starts to have much more of an effect on the other two shapes and also up probably on the very top part of the T here. The other option is to scale to exact height. What this does is instead of limiting it with a flat plane, it just scales the shape up and down in order to get to the height that we've defined. So if we were to come in here and go back to a quarter of an inch, we can see that we're getting the same rounded shapes that we were getting before, but now the maximum height of the widest shape is going to get to 0.25 inches and everything else is going to be scaled accordingly. There's one more option to define how the shape is going to look inside of the create shape function and that's the option to tilt the shape. This basically allows us to build an angle under the shapes that we have selected in order to tilt them up. In this case I don't want to tilt up all three of the shapes so what I'm actually going to do is close the function, I'm going to clear the working model, 
so that gets rid of everything we've got there and this time I'm just going to select the rectangle we'll go back into the create shape function I'm going to create a no limit rounded shape at 60 degrees and then I'm going to show you how we could tilt this up so that we leave this end on the flat plane and we raise this end up by an angle while still maintaining the shape if we check the tilt option we're going to click on set anchor and that allows us to click the first point that we want to anchor to and that's the point that's going to stay where it is now and then the second point we want to tilt upwards which is going to be tilted up by our angle here you can see our default angle is 10 degrees so that's actually now created a wedge underneath the shape that we've got there now just as before as long as I keep this vector selected I can still go ahead and make changes to that while keeping the rest of the information the same and it'll just update and automatically show me the new result based on whatever I've got selected within my parameters of the create shape function as you're building shapes and putting them into the working model the last thing that you're going to do is use the combined mode of add, subtract or merge and this is going to determine how the shape we've built with this particular function is going to be integrated with the shapes that are already in the working model we're not going to cover that in this particular presentation You'd re you should refer to the relevant section within the reference manual in order to fully get a grasp of how those combined mode works If, as in the case we've got here, I have nothing in the working model except the shape I'm currently creating, I may want to go straight from this to creating a component. I may not need to make any additional modifications using the tools I have in the working model. It may look exactly as I want it to and automatically turn that into a component. And we can do that straight from the create shape function. If we click on this button here, it will ask me for a name. The default will be relevant to the type of shape it is. So if I just hit OK, you can see the grayscale change colour. And if we close this menu, pop up the component manager, we can see that component in there. And now I can edit the shape as a component. And at this point in time, I've got both the component and the vector selected. If I just move the vector out of the way, you can see that they're not actually linked together anymore. It just happened that the two were selected in that case. The component is a completely separate entity to the vector that was used to create it. So that concludes the quick overview of the create shape function. We are going to be covering this in much more detail and showing you many examples of how this would be used in practical examples as you work your way through the other video tutorials.